What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Stacks by the Numbers, and today I am holding my feet to the fire and jumping back into another installment of my new personal series called How'd I Do? Let's Review. And the company we're looking at is one of the earlier stocks that I reviewed back on May 17th, I want to say the video was. And we're looking at Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, ticker symbol GT listed here on the NASDAQ. Uh, stock closed today, 1024 a share up a little less than 6% on the day, has been bouncing around like crazy the last several months since I made the video, went up to about uh, 15 and change, pulled back down to about 10 and change, but again, I did say you should give it at least 12 to 24 months, if not longer, right? Now, reason being is because when it comes to companies like this that you could say are undervalued on the number side, what you really have to do is give them time, right? And I hate to talk about, you know, past performance or anything like that, but I just remember about 10 years ago, we were looking at Take-Two Interactive Software, ticker symbol TTWO. I may have mentioned this before, and I mentioned that the stock was, you know, 9 10 12 $13 a share. Uh, the company had negative earnings, but there was, they had a market cap of like a billion dollars, and they made Grand Theft Auto, the video game. And every time they would make a new Grand Theft Auto, they would do like a billion dollars in sales. And I remember trying to tell people, like, this is the company you want to own. You want to own a software company, not a hardware company, right? Because software is limitless. Hardware is limited. But more importantly on that... They're bringing in basically their entire company value just off of one title. Then they're taking those sales not revenue and they're reinvesting it into research and development to make even better games, to bring in even more revenue off those titles. And then what happened? The company goes net income positive. Who upgraded it? Who took a position in it? All of a sudden, the freaking thing ran to the moon and the stock that you could have bought for $10, $12, $13, $14. $14. Yes, it was 9 or 10 years ago. But that stock that was $10, $12 a share, I believe hit north of $150, $160 a share, uh, whenever the heck it was within the last year or two. So, you know, was it boring? Did it take several years? Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, if someone brings you a situation like this and you see the undervaluement of it, I don't even know if that's a word, undervaluement, but... It's a word now, right? So if you see the undervaluement in a stock, in a company like that, if you have the foresight to see the growth and see really where it can be in 5, 7, 10 years, then, yeah, right, you know, roll the dice with a situation like that. Like I mentioned, Goodyear Tire, obviously, they make tires, and... You know, the thing is, even with this new electric vehicle push, all of these new vehicles are going to need tires, right? Which is why I'm looking at this either one of two ways. Either A, this company is going to basically maintain its business and over the years increase in value. Or B, you might have a company like a Tesla or, or a Rivian or... Jeez, I mean, it could be anybody, Polestar, right, PSNY, any of these EV companies could build up a couple of bill and then step in and actually put in a buyout bid for a company like Goodyear Tire, right? Because you're going to know at the end result, you're going to need their product on your product. So why not just cut out the middleman and just absorb the whole goddamn company, right? Now, obviously, that's wishful thinking to buy a company today and you know, have it get bought out inside of a year or two. But also at the same time, it would be advantageous for a larger company like that. Excuse me. Uh, for a larger company like that to step in and absorb a company like Goodyear Tire for those reasons, right? So you kind of have the best of both worlds. You have a company that, A, will probably grow in value over the years if you, you know, step in at around these levels and tuck it away for the long term. B, you have a company that is going to continue to stay on everyone's radar because everyone's going to need their products and services, even with their new products and services from other companies. So that gives them the potential to... Um, 
perhaps get, you know, taken out or bought out in the future. So, you know, a lot of different avenues, uh, a lot of positives that I'm seeing here on Goodyear Tire. Just to go over the numbers quickly, um, you know, PE of three and change, that, that's way too low in my opinion. Market cap, $2.9 billion, and the company last quarter brought in over $5 billion, net income positive. Even if it was a little bit, I don't care. Right, because when Airbnb is net income negative, trading eight times yearly revenue, you you know you can't you. There's really no platform for you to stand on with me here today, explaining or excuse me, justifying uh, Goodyear Tires' current valuation of less than three billion dollars. Company brought in. Over $17 billion in the year of 2021. Even if we come back here, right? Negative earnings, $12 billion. If this was any other new age BS tech company, this company that brought in $12 billion for the year would have a market cap of 50, 60, 100 billion. You know it, and I know it. Yet for some reason, Goodyear Tire bringing in 12, 14, 17 billion, the company's worth 2.8 billion. Again, like I always say, I'm sorry. Men lie, women lie, numbers do not lie. Did the stock remain relatively flat or perhaps down and red since I made my video right here at this point, May 17th? Yeah, I'll admit. It didn't fly to the moon. It didn't crater into the ground. Not much has really happened. If you wanted to take some short-term money off the table here when it hit, you know, 14, 15, fine. More power to you. But overall, again, for a long-term investment, this, in my opinion, is what you look for. And I wanted to switch over here to TradingView, because if you recall, uh, this right here was the big drop I spoke about, February earnings, and we came right here, May 17th, right here, with this stock trading at about $12, is where I made the video coming off this earnings beat back in early May. Right now, obviously, it bounced around. It hit the top of the trend here, 15 and change, and has since bouncing around. However, right here on May 17th, I drew these top and bottom trend lines, and as we can see, it has stayed in that range because it was the forming or the beginning, if you will, of a descending wedge, which is a bullish indicator. Which means that, in my opinion, it is most likely going to break out of this wedge, potentially, and rise up to at least high 11s, potentially break through to 12 and 13, going into this earnings report. And I laugh, too, because these analysts, it's always these undervalued companies, if you notice, where... You know, their feet are really held to the fire when it comes to their revenue and their EPS and their earnings estimates, right? So look at this estimate, right? $5.29 billion. Quarter before, $5.36 billion estimates. They came in with five three one, right? When I see a slight miss like this, it really doesn't raise a red flag for me. Yes, the EPS side was rough. That was, I think, the first miss on the EPS side in, in several quarters. So again... I wouldn't raise a red flag for me, in my opinion. But see this slight miss here? But look, I want you to look at the estimate. 5.36 billion, right? Look at the quarter before. 5.035 billion. And they come in 3% higher. So to go from 5.03 billion to 5.36 billion, right? They came in 170 million above. But now the next quarter estimates were you know, 350, 360 million dollars above where they were the quarter before. So what is that, like an 8% rise quarter over quarter? And I laugh because certain companies who haven't been decreasing in value, like Goodyear Tire as of late, um, you know, they're lucky to see increases of 1, 2, 4% year over year sometimes, not even just quarter over quarter, right? But here, right, Goodyear Tire, oh, it's undervalued, we've been beating up the stock, okay, so 5 billion, boom, 5.36 billion now, and look before, right, 4.7, back up to 5 billion, that's why it's, it's the jumps in estimates that makes me laugh, 
And that's why if you pump up estimates that high for a company that you're beating up, and then they come in with a slight miss like that, look at that, less than 1%, I'm sorry, I don't view that as a negative. And if Wall Street wants to beat up the stock, well then, like I say, thank you very much. Because if I liked it at 12, I'm going to love it down at 9 and 10. And if you want to beat it up, that's no problem. Because I'm not looking to trade it next week, next month, next quarter. I am tucking this baby away for the long term. Full disclosure, I do not have any discretionary funds at the moment. I do not have a position in Goodyear Attire. But think about what I'm saying here. We're talking long term. And I'm telling you now. One day, this stock is going to be rocking and rolling. And it's because of, again, uh, a long-term uh, descending wedge that is setting up our bullish pattern. It is because uh, revenue consistently keeps growing, the business increasing the size of its footprint and its overall income. And uh, like I said, even with the new EV pushed, you know, people are still going to need tires. And you got Goodyear tire, baby. Now, we're looking at the daily here at stock charts real quick. We throw on the Bollinger Bands. Uh, MACD looks like it's potentially curling upwards, right? But we had a big pop today, 6%. So, you know, nothing uh, that really caught my eye here. Uh, looks like it's been rejecting this 50-day moving average because they're beating the stock up and keeping it in that downward wedge. RSI about 45, just maintaining... MACD completely flat here on the weekly, basically. And again, you can see this is our wedge that we're in. And it's only going to be a matter of time before we regain 13, 13 and change, 14 and change. Potentially, <clears throat> excuse me, potentially going into next quarter's earnings. Where uh, hopefully if you're a holder, you know, they post good numbers and, and they have a little pop from that level. But overall, again, uh... Not much has changed. And when it comes to a company that I feel, in my opinion, is undervalued, especially for the long term, to turn around six, seven months later and not have much of a change, yeah, it kind of sucks. It does. But remember, if you're in it, you're trying to hold for the next six, seven years. Not you know, five, six months after you see a video on YouTube, right? So look at the long term. Remember, remind yourself, look, even pandemic, right? It hit sub $6 and then everyone started moving out of the city, buying new cars, used cars. Look at the run up to $20, $21 a share, right? That's what I'm saying. Now they want to beat it up, but it's in a, a downward trending channel, and it's more than likely going to pop out of that channel and, again, get back up to the high teens, low 20s. I'm, t I'm telling you, in, in my opinion, I really like Goodyear Tire. Because if we're rewarding crappy, horrific balance sheet companies like DraftKings and Airbnb, we sure as shit should be rewarding brand name, profitable Revenue increasing companies like the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, ticker symbol GT. So I'm going to leave it there because, uh, I don't know, I'm just getting aggravated looking at these numbers. I'm about to pop a blood vessel. No, I'm just kidding. We keep it safe here. But I'm sure you guys read through the lines. I'm sure you can appreciate everything that I'm speaking about here in this video, right? So I'll end it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, just like everyone on YouTube says, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, blah, blah, blah. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. But more importantly, I understand markets are rocky, they're uncertain, and they're volatile. So, moving forward, I wish everyone success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Have a good day. I'll see you in the next one.